good afternoon uh, this is satish uh, today i am going to present the one of the session with respect to the linux kernel part of the inter subsystem in arm boards using jailing jink board so this is basically we are trying to capture the one of the platform device module which is called inter subsystem earlier we have discussed about the smp subsystem in the arm um, with respect to the jink board i think in the last year so i tried to capture now today the interrupt subsystem so part of that uh, i'm just uh, trying to capture a lot of uh, slides uh, part of that index part i have added uh, basics of interrupt handling the interrupt call flow in arm linux systems interrupt subsystem in linux kernel irq domain map in linux and the isr execution in arm cores and part of the summary and uh, bibol so uh let's start from the interrupt handling in any embedded system or a basic uh, device how it works so from a system point of view any peripheral device or any io device takes one interrupt line on the system bus to start the interrupt sequence so once the cpu is ready to handle and uh, it's ready to acknowledge acknowledge that uh, signal on the bus then yes once that uh, interrupt vector number is ready then we can the cpu i mean like just take the remove the interrupt vector from the bus and saves it temporarily and cpu pushes the program counter and psw on the stack so this is all the basic one that everyone knows now once we are coming to the actual one uh, anyway i have added one more slide for the basics of interrupt handling which are of maskable non maskable edge triggered interrupts level triggered interrupts and the mostly what we are going to is shared peripheral private peripheral and the software generated interrupts the last three we mostly see in our arm architecture right so because when we see that uh, shared peripheral interrupts with respect to the uh, device tree we can check out from the trm what are the number we are providing that is a kind of plus 32 number it will come like whatever the actual irq plus 32 will be added to the spa and the private peripheral will be added as it is right so that is the difference that we can see between the shared peripheral and the private peripheral and the software generated interrupt is the one that which is actually coming from the other side so now uh, actually we are starting the actual interrupt call flow in the arm linux systems so i have given a diagram where i try to capture how the actual flow will start from the independent kernel to the dependent kernel or the platform dependent kernel towards the arm cpu core so i have mentioned like one one external device any external device which is going to request an irq with the help of device m underscore request irq or request thread irq whatever i mean query request irq will be internally calling request thread irq that will be going towards the hardware irq chip we can say uh, in this presentation i am taking the example of jink irq controller but anyway we can take any hardware irq it can be you just by Uh, lpc 2138 board or some people who just regular gic only as an irq controller and part of that so this request irq will be going through our linux irq subsystem from that irq subsystem it will go to the linux irq domain mapping from there it will enter into the irq controller so that is the hardware irq controller that having a lot of pins actually there's p0 to p7 pins there is a maxing of the pins will be presented one of the pin from the Z device, so that device will be enable the pin either it is P0 or to the P7 whatever the pin. So correspondingly, the interrupt generated by the IRQ controller, the same interrupt pin will be propagated to the SOC. Part of that SOC we are entering into the corresponding GPIO port, which will be connected to my interrupt controller. So because the GAC is connected to our ARM core, right? Because if we see that ARM core, we can see. that there are two or four cores whatever the number of cores below that we have an mmu and one gic so this gpio irq will be loaded will be connected to the gic which is of our generic interrupt controller which is holding the vector table actually and that vector table holds the vector addresses which internally takes of actual irq handler so the same thing we will try to capture each part of this diagram what exactly this device and request irq contains and what this irq chip contains and the internally the how the gpio 5 irq or whatever it can be gpio 4 which are the gpio port used and in between of course the actual uh, interrupt mechanism from the gic and in between there is uh, in the irq subsystem how 
the Linux IRQ subsystem, the actual function calls it maintains, and the domain mapping. So that that are in between the external device to the hardware IRQ controller. So we are feeling a set of uh, missing things because of not the actual presentation. Maybe we can showcase here. I don't know. You can see my mouse or not? But yes, uh, my plan is like in between. There is an IRQ a subsystem which is uh, part of holding set of structures which will load all the IRQ descriptors into the IRQ action. And from there, it will go to the IRQ domain map. From there, it will go to the IRQ controller, right? So now, from the inter call flow, the same one um, uh, continuing, uh, from the platform dependent kernel, external device, that means IO device, changes the level on the P5 pin, making the Jink IRQ controller to generate the interrupt. Interrupt from the Jink IRQ is connected to the GPIO5 IP code inside of SOC. And it uses line 30 of the GPIO5 module to modify the CPU for the interrupt. Whatever, whatever I have explained in the earlier uh, diagram, the same thing will be connected here. And the GPIO5 acts as an interrupt controller. And it's cascaded to G GAC part of the actual ARM code. Now we can see that actually how it is generating from the SOC to the IRQ controller. If you see that, this is the input. So this input can be either P0 pin or it can be P7 pin. So there are set of inputs, each IRQ device will be connected to one of these inputs. So that will be connected to my I2C and that I2C will raise that, okay, this particular pin has been coming from the IRQ and mapping to the uh, other side of the I2C where we are able to generate that corresponding maxing pin we are identifying. Because we know that the number of IRQs presented on the hardware side are limited compared to the IRQ numbers generated on the Linux kernel side. So that will be made through this pin, uh, pin maxing, okay? Now, the same I have explained here, the IRQ control will generate interrupt on the interrupt pin with the change of voltage levels on P0 to P7 pins. The driver can read the shadows of P0 to P7 pins, any one of that, and it will generate the separate interrupt for each of P0 to P7 pins and this driver acts as an interrupt controller. Then now, there's the DTC registration. So here I'm trying to capture all these slides with respect to the platform dependent. So once we go to the platform independent, that's a different story. How actually the IRQ subsystem, which is common to everyone, that will be coming into picture. So from this platform dependent part, yes, the DTC file, the, the Jink IRQ controller are very specific to the Jink board, right? So part of the TDC registration we are mentioning here for the device. This device is nothing but the external device, which is actually expecting the IRQ to be handled with this guy. So that is being maintained with Jing IRQ controller or whatever the name of that uh, from the .dtsi, we will add it in this .dtc file. And the type of the uh, edge trigger or the level trigger, most probably it is edge triggering only. So the type of the interrupt we are mentioning in the DTC file. With this, we can say that uh, the internal part of uh, platform dependent, and then when when come to the IRQ chip, so when the interrupt is right, raised, CPU is in interrupt context in GAC interrupt handler. So once if there is any interrupt changes, then the mode will be changed from the user mode to the SVC mode or SVC to mode to the user mode. We can say that uh, kernel mode internal it is supervisory mode. We will see that how it the different types of modes the vector table and the enter dispatcher, how it works inside the GAC. But yeah, from the IRQ controller perspective, hardware IRQ control perspective, we have generic functionalities, which is of GAC handle IRQ, which will call handle domain IRQ and in turn calls the generic handle IRQ. Okay. And then now we will come to this platform independent kernel. So here in the, very beginning, like from the kernel starting point of view, when the Linux boots, the start kernel function calls the early IRQ unit, which will internally call the ARC probe NR IRQs, which will allocate the IRQ descriptor, IRQ descriptor structure for each IRQs by calling the allocation of the descriptor function. So this will be internally calling for number of IRQs, those IRQs, each IRQ action will be internally generated that we can see because these are all Platform independence means these are internally, I mean, these are basically the basic Linux IRQ subsystem. 
the earlier slides which we are talking about is the depend platform dependent and this is of independent part so these are all common call sequence which uh, we are going to see now now uh, now from the interrupt subsystem in the lens kernel i have added one more slide here which is going to the set handle irq from the jailing interrupt control of init it will go to the set handle irq and if you are coming to here we can see that init main dot c which is part of the first kernel from the start kernel it will go to the setup architecture which is part of arc or mmu dot c from there it will go to the paging init paging init function and from the paging init it will go to the device maps init from there it will go to the early trap init okay so this is the basic uh, call structure over there from the depend of from the platform independent kernel and now let's come to this uh, the actual structures being provided out there the irq descriptor the irq chip and the irq action so i just captured that structures which because these three are the main structures used in the irq subsystem of course there are other lot of structures which are not added here but yes there are uh, the minimum uh, uh, the important structures are these three which will maintains the irq descriptor records an array of irq descriptors and it will be calling irq chip and the irq action so this irq action will load for each handler function it will be added into the descriptor which are captured here so this is of uh, irq chip which will be showcasing that start interrupt close interrupt enable interrupt prohibit interrupt and there are other functionalities provided by this irq chip and after this we can see that irq action uh, this will be taking care of the actual handler which we are registering in the request irq which was uh, the second argument what we are giving the handler that handler will be taken care by this user registered handler user registered interrupt handler which is of irq action structures first member you can see that irq handler underscore t handler that is actually the one coming from the request irq second argument so these three are the one thing and so this is the actual request irq which we usually see that any io device will be registered with this so this is the basic one so now i have just captured a kind of a diagrammatic representation to showcase that irq descriptor, descriptor is calling irq action and the irq chip and then now we will go to the next level of irq domain map so this domain map basically is the mechanism to separate the local interrupt numbers all the hardware irqs from the linux irq numbers by using a set of functions again irq log descriptors and irq free descriptors so this irq domain library adds mapping between hardware irq and the irq numbers so we will see that how the call flow of this domain map irq domain map so now if we can see this irq domain map in linux so it will use a different type of domain mappings here there is one a legacy map or the linear map or the tree map there is no map so basically we use legacy map or the linear map basically we use out of these uh, domain mappings so this will be called with respect to these irq domain add of one of these functionalities which will call this irq domain operations from there it will go to the create mapping so it will go to the actual controller if we are comparing this slide with the first slide which i have showcased from the i uh, device am request irq to the jink irq controller in between these irq subsystems and the domain mapping will be done so this irq create mapping will be creating a kind of each irq discs towards my hardware irq controller that's where the generating for each pin the corresponding interrupt so that part i will show here uh, the linear mapping part irq domain add linear and add tree and add number these are all the different type of mappings available in the subsystem so here the hierarchy of irq domain will be coming from the alloc irqs activate irqs and the domain deactivate irq and the free irqs so now if we can go to one of the example of the mapping where we are using the legacy mapping here it will do add legacy where it is calling the irq domain operations so here domain map and uh, on map we are calling one constant structure here structure irq domain with respect to irq domain operations 
So this legacy map provides a continuous range of IRQ numbers has already been allocated for the controller in that the IRQ number can be calculated by adding a fixed offset to the hardware IRQ number and vice versa means like we can we can see that if we had if we had a kind of uh, debugging where at the time of debugging we can check out these numbers how it is being generated actually because we can compare basically from the trm whatever the number is coming which is presented in the dtc and the number we can check out from the request irq whatever the return value from the request irq that number so in between these numbers are going to change based on this domain mapping so these can be compared like how it is being changed with respect to so that's where like actually the domain map is coming into the picture so in that way we can uh, check out those values actually that's that's what the last statement is talking about with respect to legacy map so now uh, inside the isr execution in the arm course how exactly it is working so here we have a different modes user mode supervised mode we know that there are uh, seven processor modes and how it's going to work so after that like we can say that uh, the actual vector table in gic which is actually maintaining the restored vector undefined vector prefetch data word at the succession irq and faq so and then uh, so this will be actually talking about the change of the controller actually i can say that uh, uh, okay this is the dispatcher the below code will execute when irq exception is raised so we can see that if there is any exception or so the interrupt is raised so we can see that actually the cpsr which is the the 0 to 31 bits will change that one of the bits to change the mode so that time the cpsr and the spsr will come into picture and they will load the data into the spsr and it will load all this uh, irq handlers address into the program counter and once it is done it will be loaded back with respect to the link register the, the old address so that's that's the normal way of irq execution but yes we are we can see here the interrupt dispatcher which is actually going to execute at the time of interrupt happens so this interrupt dispatcher will be loaded or can be taken care by by the help of this sequence i mean to say spsr irq r0 and lr irq are saved on the private irq stack and there and then the original process mode that means the initial process whatever is running Uh, the transfer happens from the kernel mode to the user or user mode to the kernel mode so after that is yes, the moves uh, and then moves pc kernel which loads spsr irq into cpsr and puts lr into pc so this is the one that at the end of the sequence it will be loaded because the lr holds the return value that will be loaded into the pc to continue with the actual execution right so now this is the actual irq handler we can see that the stack pointer will be loaded with the r0 and we know this bad address this actually this is a kind of uh, the recently changed uh, assembler code actually it is earlier i think sysbv so that ba bad address the badr is the recent assembler but yeah this is the macro irq handler we are using here uh, part of this assemblatic code assembly code so now coming to the summary of this so isr execution starting from the request irq request irq generated from the io device goes to the linux irq subsystem which is holding irq descriptor irq action and irq chip so i have highlighted whatever that request irq to the irq subsystem irq subsystem to the irq domain map and from there to it is going to the irq chip controller from there it goes to gpio ports of soc and then it is actually mapped to our generic interrupt controller part of the arm core so now even so this is the actual execution so i have captured the things which are in a minimal way but actually if we are seeing it there are a lot of functions coming from the irq chip i mean the hardware irq controller it can be jink or some other uh, platform vendors controller been been used like you know marvel uses the amda controllers i mean uh, the kind of max 7325 and all so there are a lot of controls available in the irq if, if you check the linux kernel code so the thing is i just want to capture that in a minimal way which is gives the complete view but yes on a on a layout we, we can try to understand from the from the platform independent to the till to the lowest level so it will be 
are capturing all the areas but yeah uh, to the whatever the things that it is possible i try to capture in that uh, minimal way right and coming to this whatever the things is i have just followed this provisional lens kernel architecture which is of uh, the basic book uh, kind of uh, it handles all the chapters part of the lens kernel and then generic arc handling and kernel arc domain some set of blocks uh, i have been uh, gone through and the gpio drivers which is internally taking care of uh, this gpio drivers mapping so that's it actually